What's happening, big dogs? We are back again with this week's narrative. Hit that intro. This week's narrative. Depth charts and first team reps matter. What say you, Noah? We've been starving for news. It feels like every little bit of news bit that gets out there gets totally overblown, overhyped, completely mistitled by Roto World with the clickbait fucking titles. But honestly, I love it, man. It just feels like we're back at seasons. And I'll take anything I can get. But how do you approach all of this news? I guess news. Is it newsworthy? Is it real? Is it fake? Depth charts. Like, what do you think? How do you approach all of it? Just like you, Mike, I love it because it gives me the opportunity to create memes. People that think Darwin Thompson is the RB1 on the Chiefs <laughs> because he received one snap from Patrick Mahomes when Clyde edwards Hilaire was like right behind him about to get the next snap because he cut him in line. I, that just – I'm going to get upset, and I don't want to get <laughs> – way too late for me to get upset. You think Darwin Thompson is going to be the RB1 in this offense when he couldn't beat out – Daryl Williams, Damian Williams, LaShawn McCoy, and a bunch of other frauds in this offense. And I don't want to just stick on this guy. And I honestly haven't been paying too much attention to any other beat reporters other than, like, the fact that A.J. Dillon looks big. He's <laughs> on the sideline for passing down works. But they're like, but look at his legs. Like, he's sitting for passing down work. He's not with the first team at all. But look at those legs. Like, it's ridiculous how far these guys can, can write a story based off of a guy's appearance or the fact that he touched the ball one, one millisecond before the next guy touched it. To me, Mike, I just, I mostly block it all out. I honestly don't think of many, I don't know many examples of these, of these blurbs happening because when I see them, I just, I scroll right past them. Unless I see people making memes about it and I start rubbing my hands, I'm like, all right, I'm about to jump into this. To me, there's just no point. You're just wasting your time looking at preseason type of, uh, you know, it's not always terrible because last year you could have found out that like Terry McLaurin was going to be the guy by reading that type of stuff or seeing uh, whether or not somebody was slow to learn the playbook because of that. But most of the time, if you have to convince yourself very very hard off of one roto world blurb that the guy you're standing for is going to win the job this this upcoming season because of that one story i think you're trying a little bit too hard and you should just let reality and common sense take over and think hmm they spent the 32nd overall pick on a running back after they won the super bowl maybe they're not going to use the <laughs> sixth round pick out of utah state that had three carries for negative mm-hmm. eight yards last season as a starting back this season i don't know to me it just makes sense but Apparently, Twitter just is a completely different reality that doesn't work in the same plane as, yeah. of existence as my brain. Yeah, but Darwin Thompson has elite contact balance, and he can hurdle guys. So that's what, that's what you're missing in your analysis. <laughs> um, look, at all jokes aside, I don't think many people actually believe Darwin Thompson is going to be anything uh, other than a, than a change of pace back. But like maybe now they think that he's going to be a backup back. And I think you just got to really be careful with like team depth charts. And I joke about this, but it's not a joke. Like, Depth charts are prepared by like team coffee boys, right? Like what is the, what is the coach's incentive to tell you who is a first string, second string uh, and what alignment people are going to be doing this early in the season? There is zero incentive, right? And that's why I usually fade all that stuff and rely on preseason. Unfortunately, we don't have preseason this year, so we can't really see who's playing out, playing with the first team, who's actually out there and getting, getting that stuff. But just so you know, like, Kalen Balazs was getting first team reps last year. And, and, you know, I saw some poor sucker on Twitter, you know, come out bragging about how he traded his first round, 2020 first round pick for Kalen Balazs last year because he's going to be the RB1 in Miami. Obviously, that lasted maybe half a quarter uh, before that was no longer reality. But you got to really, I think this year more than any year, you really got to trust your evaluations of these players and just let the action speak louder than words. Like the fact that they drafted Clyde Edwards Alaire in the first round, the fact that they spend a second round pick on Cam Akers, the fact that, you know, like all this like hard knock shit coming out too. Like it's just like way too much news. And like because we don't have preseason and because we didn't have like all the training camp videos like leading up to this, it's shortened. Like, people are just hanging on to every little bit of thing that like confirms their prior biases. Like that's why you don't find me retweeting anything. Like I don't, you don't, I'm not retweeting any positive news. on like any players I like, because like, it's just, that's, it's just that it's all noise. Like one of the most glaring ones was like the most recent one I saw was like Brian Edwards is getting first team snaps. And then immediately on my timeline, I saw like a bunch of buzzers tweeting out like, Oh, that's it. Brian Edwards, like wide receiver one, like Brian Edwards is the beast. Like he's it. And, like, dude, I love Brian Edwards. Like we, we've loved Brian Edwards for a long time and I still love Brian Edwards but I'm not changing anything based on that because if you actually read the goddamn thing the other people getting first team reps were like Nelson Aguilar right and other people that aren't starting like Henry Ruggs is going to start guys like, as much as 
we have people love to hate on him. Like he's going to get that opportunity. And I think Brian Edwards is a, is a better receiver in the long run. And as much as I love Brian Edwards, you can't buy into like roto world blurbs, especially if you're not even reading the article. And like, I think that's what they count on, right? Like, cause they know the shit they put out is just clickbait. Like people don't even fucking read the articles 90% of the time. So if you just read the headlines, you're probably going to get misled. And the same thing with like depth charts. Like I know people like freaking like subscribe to that. Like it's religion, but don't just don't do it because what you want is you want to be able to project who's going to be the lead guy, like down the line. I don't care who's taking the first snap. Uh, out of the out of the first game right like I don't care who's on the field first I care about who's on the field more and the, a lot of those like coffee boy depth charts are not going to tell you that regardless of what people try to make you think they will believe me that they, they don't like, I look at them every year because it's a piece of information but in terms of like how they translate to like in the season it's like it's like not even it's like it's hilariously bad how, how bad they translate and uh, especially when it comes to rookies like they're going to put like they're literally going to put like rookies as third, third strings. Like I wouldn't be shocked at all if like one day they came out and put like Marlon Mack as first string, Jonathan Williams if he's even still there. Or, no, Naheem Hines is like second string, and Jonathan Taylor is like third string. That would not shock me at all because I've seen it time and time again. Like if you see like AJ Brown as like the wide receiver three or whatever. Like there's no talent evaluation in that. It's just literally like, hey, who's? It's almost like a seniority list. Like who's been here longer? Boom, first team boom, like second string. Like that's how it's done. And like coaches don't care. Like I, I don't even know if they even review that shit, but I would not put too much stock into it personally. Uh, and if you do like good for you, but uh, I'm not doing it. Mike, I just realized something and I'm not sure if it's hit you yet, but we're about like 30 episodes deep of bunk bed breakdowns, which means we're about like 28 to 30 because I know we skipped a few 20 to 30 narratives deep that w- one narrative a week. And basically every time we've talked about something, we're basically saying Twitter's a fraud. I think <laughs> at this point, there's no point of having a Twitter account because every week we come on here and talk about how stupid Twitter is. And our, our main plug, like the thing we have below our names are our Twitter handles. And we're basically telling these people every single week that Twitter is a farce. So maybe this isn't good for business, but I'm starting to realize that, you know, Twitter may not, might not be the answer. Maybe we got to go back to TikTok and try to convince <laughs> Donald Trump that we need a different outlet to push fantasy football content because it's sounding like Twitter is not the answer. Look, Twitter, Twitter, I, I think like Twitter is like a tool, just like any other tool, like, like a trade calculator, like an ADP. If you understand its weaknesses, it has value. And that's why I use all the tools. Like I don't laugh about trade calculators except when, uh, except when uh, what, what's that dude trade trade calculator king one of our leagues starts, <laughs> starts printing screenshots Muns Muns yeah, the god Munz, the god the god shout out to Muns dude I, we actually do we love having you in the league man having a lot of fun but uh, it's a tool like look if you can understand the way the Twitter hive mind thinks and and how the narratives are pushed and how how overreactions work and you know just the intricacies of Twitter and like all these like analysts like pushing out all this shit like. If you understand the weaknesses, you can absolutely take advantage. And it's a great piece of information. Even, even misinformation is informative because it tells you what not to do. It tells you what to fade. It tells you where not to go. So to that, to that degree, like, honestly, I love Twitter. Also just for the memes, like the memes, when, when, when memes hit strong on Twitter, like that's where it's at. Like that's where the true content is. But honestly, like even on a regular basis, like there's a lot of good stuff going on on Twitter and, you know, a lot of good people, a lot of smart people on there. You just got to make sure that you follow the right guys and you fade, you fade the noise from, from the, from the sheep. And that, that's like yeah. the key. You got to fade the sheep, the consheeps as a, as the God counselor always tells us. Yeah. Just don't take it too seriously. Definitely don't take me too seriously. Did it really hit me that my name on there is FB God. Like how fucking <laughs> lame is that? I realize when I retweet things or something, it says fantasy FB God. That shit's got to change real quick because that's, Honestly, I think it's kind of like cool how lame it is. But at the same time, I'm like, if somebody finds my account, they knew who I am in real life. Like this kid's an absolute asshole. So I might got to change that up. Yours at least is a little witty with Mike me up and you have your real name on there. So maybe leave in the comments what I should change it to. I'm going to have to rebrand my entire life because FB God talking like he knows what he's talking about football. Like shit, shit isn't adding up at that point. Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. That's this week's narrative. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you keep fading that fading that noise on twitter don't get don't get hit <laughs> Blade Runner. Don't, get, don't get hit with the don't get hit with that noise you know make sure you know what's real and what's fake and hopefully we'll do a good job of helping you guys identify uh what is real and what's fake um yeah so you know hope you guys enjoy it and uh see you again next week man we're gonna keep doing this narrative exposing twitter for the fraud that it is <laughs> <laughs> all right see you guys peace